What brings me joy? Being a child of God, knowing that he will take care of us, all of us, and also knowing that whatever happens, my faith is going to help with getting me to a happy place. And I appreciate the fact that I'm able to let everybody know what brings me joy and let my sisters and brothers in Christ understand that I understand knowing how it feels to be blessed and to wake up being a child of God. And I appreciate that and my family and Christ Jesus. Amen. I was there to hear your born in cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. I was there when you were but a child with a faith to suit you well in a place of light you wandered off to find where demons dwell when you heard the wonder of the word i was there to cheer you on you were raised to praise the living Lord, to whom you now belong. If you find someone to share your time, and you join your hearts as one, I'll be there to make your verses rhyme from dusk till rising sun. In the middle ages of your life, not too old, no longer young, I'll be there to guide you through the night, complete what I've begun. When the evening gently closes in, and you shut your weary eyes, I'll be there as I have always been, with just one more surprise. I was there to hear your morning cry. I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. Good morning. Statement of welcome. Who is welcome here at TLC? Whatever color, nationality, or race, whatever language. Wherever you were born, whatever your immigration status, you are welcome. If you are three days old, 30 years old, or 103 years old, whatever your age, you are welcome. Whatever faith or wherever you are in your faith journey, even if you've never stepped foot in a church before, you are welcome. If you are single, married, widowed, divorced, separated or partnered, whatever your relationship status, you are welcome. Whatever your sexual orientation, gender, identity, or gender expression, you are welcome. Whatever addictions, phobias, regrets, whatever burdens, whatever brokenness, you are welcome. If you are fully abled, disabled, or of differing abilities, you are welcome here at TLC.
so one moment where I experienced an abundance of joy is when my goddaughter was born. Um, she was born in April of um, 2020 and you know obviously we all know what was happening in April of 2020 and it was just something that's like pretty special I think because um, you know it was such like a uncertain and like scary time um, and so yeah like and it, it new life is always so hopeful and so special and so yeah it, it was an abundance of joy and it's just a reminder of like why are we doing all of this you know and it's it's for the people who come after us so i definitely i experienced an abundance of joy getting to meet her and now you know getting to see her grow up and to to guide her um, when she gets older, so that's something that's really special. This is a reading from John, second chapter, verses 1 through 11. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Good morning. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did, know, did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serve the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this and the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee and revealed his glory and his disciples believed him here ends the reading. The very fact that I'm alive and I'm breathing is abundant joy. I love that I have numerous people in my life that helped me to accomplish all my goals. I feel abundance when I'm also able to share gifts and help others with whatever their goals are. Today I take this breath with abundant joy. Thank you, friends. Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God our Father and His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Look, I love weddings. I've been to over a hundred of them. In churches, in homes, at parks, even at Disney. There's something amazingly powerful about witnessing two people vow to commit to walk through life's joys and challenges together. I love watching them stumble with their emotions, trying to get out the words, and each drinking deeply of one another's souls, promising to love and to cherish from this day forth forevermore. And that's where this week's sermon begins, at a wedding, a long ago wedding in Cana of Galilee. 
in over a hundred weddings in which I've participated, rarely, if ever, has the concern been the service. I've never had a runaway bride or groom with cold feet. Now once a maid of honor forgot the wedding ring for the groom, and I had to palm my own ring and give it to the bride to give to the groom, and no one was the wiser for it, but that's about as bad as it's been. In this wedding at Cana in Galilee, long before any of us was born, the service had already taken place by the time the story begins. The officiant, the bride, the groom, they don't even appear in the story. And the biggest problem in the story? Not a missing ring, not a runaway bride, but not enough wine. Now we may, as we dive into the story, ponder the mystery of why only the writer of the Gospel of John is concerned about it. Did Matthew, Mark, and Luke think that it was too insignificant, this story of a lack of wine? Is it such a cute little miracle, isn't it? Changing water into wine and a good wine at that, a miracle that saves somebody's butt. The person who tried to save a few bucks with the caterer or miscounted the number of guests or didn't allow for the great thirst at the end of a long service and likely even a longer party, Jesus in the end is there for them. But it really begins with Jesus and his mother having a conversation. Jesus, she says, they have no wine. And Jesus responds, woman, what concern is that to you and to me? Woman, what concern is that to you and me? this lack of wine, you see. And then Mary turns to the servants and says, do whatever he tells you. Because Mary seems to know that he's going to do something. Jesus may think it's not yet his time to reveal himself as the very Son of God, but apparently Jesus is wrong. Mary seems to know that he would do something do, Mary says to the servants, whatever he tells you. The water is poured, and the wine, good wine at that, is poured out, and everyone goes on having a good time, a time of abundant joy, with apparently abundant good wine. As cute of a miracle as they come, don't you think? Just a few thirsty people and a wedding steward at a risk of high-level embarrassment, saved at the last minute by Jesus, showing his power, the power given to him by God, changing water into wine. We can imagine it's a joke in the making that will be told and retold countless times over the ages. Hey, do you remember when Bob and Susie's wedding, when at the reception they ran out of wine, and boy, wasn't that embarrassing. But Jesus steps in, and all is well. The first miracle, his miracle, a miracle of abundance, not just some wine, but gallons and gallons and gallons of wine. And not just okay wine, or even good wine, but great wine, an abundant amount. Now, I'm grateful for the stories of abundant joy that some of our TLC folks shared to give flesh to, to embody this abundance of joy in our lives. This abundance of God is with us already as we can see, as we listen to these stories that some of our TLC family share. The abundance of God is with us to be experienced today, every day, and this abundance of God will be with us at the completion of all things as well. See, Jesus says, my time has not yet come, but his time will come, and has come, and will come again. This miracle also points us to the abundance of God's grace that will be poured out through Jesus for all and what that grace means for us, that the power of death has no more hold over us, that you and I have been enfolded into the household 
of God forever. Given that gift of abundant grace, mercy, and love that we receive from God in and through Christ Jesus, how shall we, you and I, embody that abundance in our lives? We've heard from just a couple of Trinity members how that abundance is experienced in their lives. But how will we all embody that abundance in our lives? For as we have received, so should we live. As we have been blessed, so should we be a blessing. As we have received, so shall we live. As we have been blessed, so should we be a blessing. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, our only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hi, my name's Deborah. I wanted to let you know that I am grateful for family and friends, for the lovely weather we've been having the last few days, and that I have the ability to help um, others on occasion, which is a uh, great value to me. Lord God, thank you for all that you give us. Thank you for today. Lord, we lift up those who need prayer today. We lift up Sam, who's in the hospital and having a procedure on Wednesday. We pray, we pray for friends and family of John. We pray for Izzy, Laura, Lily, Stacy, Jane, friends and family of Mary. We pray for Jack, Kathy, John, Lori, Amy, Andy, Aunt Bobby, Wendy. We lift up Randall, Elizabeth, Mercy's cousin, Mickey's friend, and David. We pray for Ann Fine and her brother Tommy, who's on a ventilator and medically induced coma due to COVID. Lord, we pray for PK and family. We pray for John, Nils, and Sandra T. For Kelly and family, for Marcel, Fran and Tanya, Sharon, Claire and family, Christine, Deborah Stewart, John and family, Nancy in the early stages of cancer treatments. We pray for the Lowe family, Bev and family, the Bailey and Wingard families, and Sheila B and Patty M. Lord, we pray for all of those who have contracted COVID-19, dealing with the virus and other related um, illnesses. Lord, we pray for Angela as she faces surgery related to her cancer, for Angie Steeples. We pray for Lisa Gomez, Karen, and their families. We pray healing for Terry, Deanne, Graciani, and Butch. We pray strength and healing for Nikita. We pray for Bill, Miss Bev, Pam, Mark, John, Juwan, Robert, Maya, and Olivia. For Miss Marjorie and Mrs. Gibbons, for the Hill, Grant, Stewart, Salisbury, Smith, Slaughter, White families, for the Blackston, Payne, Hill, Cooper, and Smith families, for our TLC family members and friends and our neighbors. We pray for Claire, Nicole, and Matt, the Prescott family, and everyone celebrating a birthday in February. We pray for those who do not have a, home, a church home or someone to pray for them, for those looking for employment and for those dealing with financial problems. We pray for God's animals, big and small, the people of Surfside, Cuba, Haiti, and the people hit by terrible weather conditions. Lord, we pray for them. Pray for Barbara, Tony, Alice, Nick, Carol, Jasmine, Roberto, Gail, Doreen, Kathy, Janice, Casey, and Mom, Jesse, and Jackie. Lord, we pray for Sharon Flynn. We pray for Donna, Kathy, Jim, Noah, Amanda, Zori, Tim, Vicki, Diane, Ann, David. We lift up Betty, Bernadette, Sally, Skeeter, Beverly, Christine, and Alberto and Chris. We lift up Nicole and Matt and their unborn baby. We pray for Amanda and Drew, Carrie and Patrick, Elizabeth and Kayla. We pray for Cruz, Everett, Ava, Miles, and Annalise. Lord, we lift up Jonathan, Tanya, Jose Sr., Barbara, Vera, and all of those, Lord, who 
need prayer, who we speak now on our lips or in our hearts. We ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, God has shown us what is good. And what does the Lord require of us? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. Amen. How many days are there until this year's Nehemiah action? There are 57 days until we stand bold for justice. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What a joy divine leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, Everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all. Go in peace, love God, love all. Thanks be to God.
Amen. Go in peace. Love God and love all. Thanks be to God.